You are listening to an All Games Radio Network broadcast of allgames.com. Hi, this is Normie from Knuckleballer Radio and Zombie Cast, and you're listening to one of my favorite shows on the Geeky Antics Network. Don't forget to check out the rest of the gang over at geekyantics.net. Warning, there might be rants and food ahead and possibly inappropriate behavior. Don't tell anybody, though. What's up, everybody? Geeks, gamers, ninjas, robots, girls, nerds, babies, old people, everybody else that listens to the show. <laughs> what's up? It's Horseplay <laughs> Live. Yeah, it's really bad this today. Today is Thursday, February 4th. We're already in February. Holy shit. 2016, <laughs> episode 112 technically title I like, I like how you put that beyond graphics video games and innovatives and it, that innovate and impact part two indeed yeah yeah but as you guys hear in the background of course we we all know him and the the, the lovable huggable <laughs> <laughs> yogi <Yeah. Zilla. laughs> You I, ran for, out of... I forgot. <laughs> God. As you, you tonight we and uh, we got tonight, guys. We don't have any cams. Um, I'm not feeling very good. I'm in lots of pain. They just did about a bunch of prodding at the doctors, and I'm just not feeling the cameras. So, of course, Jedi's up, and then you guys have a little montage of Yogi moments. Um, you know, drinking, sitting like he's cool. You know, stuff like that. You know, the yogi. So, what's up, oh, dude? Oh, that, that, that's actually a thing? Yeah, just wa- the... watch the, the watch the little reel. Like, I, I got going there for you. You got, one oh, where you're like, you got one where you're, like, in your khakis, and you're, like, a blue shirt, and your arms crossed, and you got your hand on your chin. What's up? <laughs> oh, that one, yeah. Do you have one, the... the toasting. You're, you're toasting a drink. Do you have the, yo- the, 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 yo- the Godzilla... Uh, Photoshop where my face is on the Godzilla. No, I don't have that one. I, I got them <laughs> off the drive. And then you got one that's sitting in a black shirt with a white logo. You got a goatee and you got your glasses on. And then your uh, Yogi Zilla banner. How you been, man? I got a... Good, I'm good. Uh, I don't know. But I just want to make sure we do say at the top of the show that that song, the opening song that Obi I know loves so much provided to us Royalty free by Technoax. That's Techno with the K. You know, until maybe our a, a friend of ours, maybe someone whose name rhymes with uh, Beth Fee, or you're an idiot. Left Fee. I don't Guys, know. also Get a with this, fee, maybe you know, of possibly. course. <laughs> of course, maybe. like last week, guys, we're gonna introduce him now and early because he's gonna be a part of the show. SG from R9 Cast. I got it right too. What's up, dude? What's up, guys? Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm low. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. Let me turn you up. <laughs> okay, now we don't. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I'm back. I'm back. But yeah, I was I was thinking about um uh composings and stuff. So, so you know, it it's it takes a while for get for that stuff to I know, I know. Pour out of my brain. Can't yeah, the creative process. yeah, Yogi, you can't just pull it right out of his ass. You gotta be. It took you what, like, uh... 
It took you like a year uh, to put together the Fire with Fire soundtrack, right? No. <laughs> He's like, I, I could pull it right out of my ass. It wouldn't sound very good, but I, I could. Yeah. yeah, that's the problem. I don't want it to be crappy crap. Crap can be crap, you know. So, uh, you know, uh, and I'm, I'm in the middle of a soundtrack, so uh, I'm trying to get it all done. I'm just, I'm just messing anyway. I, I, I know. Like, I like the Robot Bunny opening theme. Uh, it's just kind of become our thing. Yogi, you're an asshole, man. No, <laughs> I'm not. I'm just busting chops. Bringing him back into the combo. I was yeah, him. Like, that's not. I mean, he's a <laughs> guest, man. SG knows how I roll. You treat guests like that, man. He's never going to be like, fuck that Yogi guy. Yeah. See? Yeah. Yeah, beat it. Just beat it. <laughs> beat it. Curtis, for you, see? Man, yeah, see? <laughs> You're talking so, to me. <laughs> so, you know, I want to just reinforce this message throughout the show for, for as many episodes as I have to, but I have a copy of Dungeon of the Endless for whoever wants it. <sighs> message me on Twitter or Steam. I want to give it to someone that's really excited about the game. So, Yay. I'm Yogi Zilla everywhere. I'm pretty easy to stalk, for better or worse. But, uh, you know, at, at the top of this show, I know we usually talk about what we've been up to and whatever, but I want to say, because basically what I've been up to is playing the Division beta. Blah, blah, I blah. I want to speak to that a little bit. Did anybody else play this? No, can't play, can't get in. No, I didn't, I didn't get an invite. I'm so mad. Damn. Damn. Mm-hmm. See, now if you would have made sure that you would have told us earlier... It's, all good. I know. it's, all good. it's your Let's fault for it. not telling us, Yogi. Well, I'll tell you what, right or now, or pushing the issue to make sure they go to the division website and get on the waiting list because there's gonna be another beta. It there has to be because this beta was pretty much the same as the alpha. Not a, it's not bad, but they're really pulling the, their punches with it. Like they have a crafting system. You can pick up the materials for crafting, but you can't do any crafting. Uh-huh. Um, so there's so many parts of the game that they're like holding back on um oh. and they kind of leaned they're kind of leaning right now really heavily on the pvp which is not a bad thing but mm-hmm. i want i hope that it's equally as good on the pve side you know because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that's something that again destiny kind of uh makes me sad about mm-hmm. nobody yeah. says that there's, a, there's an open beta at the end of the month they might even do something sooner than that it's like they did with the alpha but yeah i, I have a feeling like there'd be two more uh betas before they release, I mean, we got till March eighth. <laughs> Obi's wow. making weird faces. He t- he turned on the camera to make weird faces at me. That's creepy. <laughs> wow, King Deem in the house. Did you see what I'm gonna do next? Oh, BFT said, so "Don't worry, the division will be a watered down third party, third person Destiny without a cool sci-fi setting." Wow. Mm. Mm. And I, you know that's the thing. I love sci-fi, and and and, and it. Destiny, it just falls so short. It's lazy. It's not Bungie's best work. That's that's yeah. not, that, that's my problem with it. It's a great game, but it would have been great if it was another company, not Bungie. Mm. I expect more from Bungie. Yeah. But that's only part of it. But so, on a rant. question for you, Yogi. Now, you've played both The Division, and you've played um, the, the the last one that just came out, right? Yeah. Which one? What is that? Um Siege. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Right? So, yeah. out of both of those, which one would you say that would, you know, not me or nothing, because I'm probably going to end up getting both of them anyway, but, like, for somebody that can only get one game, which one would they get, that they need to get, The Division or Siege? Why? Ooh, I'm going to have to say Siege, but it, that also depends what you like. The thing about Siege is that it does one thing really, really well, and that's the PvP. But uh, you know, Terrace Hunt, you know, that that that's good too. Uh, it's just actually let me let me step back. They do one thing really well: team team based tactical shooter. E- Everything is about working t- with the team to get, take care of objectives, whether it's clear out all the terrorists, uh, disarm this bomb, defend this point, whatever it is, rescue a hostage. It's really good about that. Um, the division, however, I think will fill a void for what we, what a lot of been, a lot of us been waiting for is like a, a true open world shooter, you know, experience. And because Destiny, when you really look at Destiny, 
it's it is that, but the it's really a tiny world compared to what it could have been, you know, and and it's instanced on top of that. Like it limits so, how many people can be in any instance. That it's so weird. how many how many people can be in the in a group in the division? It's four four player squads, but you see constantly see people on your map and other groups running around. So it, it's a world that feels very much alive. So like anybody can shoot you, like kind of. It's just like. Uh... Um, H one Z one and fucking the other crap survival game, right? No, because uh, PVP is only enabled in the dark zone, like the Wild West. You know that's where it's a quarantine zone and a anything goes. But if you start just randomly shooting people, you go rogue and then it reveals your location in the area, and then people come after you for the bounty. All so. My of course, you know, since it is a beta, everybody is like, well, I'm not going to keep my my progress. There's no real risk to doing this. I'm just going to troll around, and everybody's just shooting everyone just because they can. I think it's going to play out very differently when it's a real game, and you actually want to keep your loot and, you know, not provoke people. Right. So. Well, it's definitely a game that I, I thought about playing because, like, and it was kind of like my... Because so many people were talking about, oh, Siege is just so badass, and I really wanted to get it. And then and then they, everybody was starting to talk about uh, the Division, and I'm like, man. And I started watching videos on it and gameplay on it. I'm like, oh, f fuck. I don't know what to do. So yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's me. So, I mean, but if anybody else wants to do it, and, I mean, if they're going to get it, I end up getting it when it comes out, I, I am, I'll be looking for a group. Yeah. yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough call. It depends really what you want. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big time Clancy fan. I, lo I love all those games, so can't go wrong with either one. But they are, they are very distinct, you know, uh, games. I mean, there's some similarities. They are tactical shooters. You can't just run and gun. I mean, you could. You're gonna probably die a lot. <laughs> you right. know, and you can't really lone wolf either. You really have to work with your teammates. You know. Um, but Rainbow Rainbow Six Siege is more uh, close quarters. It's uh, you have a lot more of a playing area. So right. we got some Halo, some Halo hype, and some Halo hate in the in the chat. <laughs> Ooh boy! Oh boy! King Team doesn't like uh, Halo. Yeah. But uh, you guys should talk about how your week went, and I gotta see a quick bio. You're welcome. For they're not on the air. Yeah. SG, SG, how how was your week? Tell us a little, so tell us something fun. So share an anecdote. Uh, an anecdote. Hmm. L l let's see. I, g I have no anecdotes. Oh yes, I do. No, I don't. I've just been uh, you know, uh, uh, chilling in the studio. Oh, actually, I went down to Miami to record a vocal list and a guitarist. Is that an anecdote? That's not really anything. Just, <laughs> not just really. Yeah. You do. Yeah. It's, Nothing, you know, just everyday stuff, you know, nothing special. Uh, working on new tracks on the OST, the uh, Junkie T. As I, I, I uh, explain this stuff on, on the R9 cast, but I'll let you guys know about it later if you care. But yeah, we got, we got stuff going on. Um, did I play any games? I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Oh, I played the Baba Yaga Tomb Raider stuff, which was pr pretty good. But it was short. It should have been part of the main game, but it wasn't. And that's right. kind of messed up. And it was 10 bucks, and I was like, ah, it was good, but not $10? $10, no. Nah, yeah, I've been, uh, I got some extra, uh, like some like some Steam, you know, some Best Buy cards still from Christmas that I'm going to get some Steam cards and get a few more games and get more copies of, like, the games that I like to play more. Um to because I just give them away to okay. people that want to play them, yeah. Um, like right now, we're we're like we're the last two or three days we've been actually two days we've been hard into the American Truck Simulator, actually a day and a half, really. Um, so and how is that though? Because I mean, well, I've heard of the Euro Truck Simulator, I'm just like, what's well, the, if, what's the if you're if you're like it's a simulator game, so I mean, if you have the patience for that and you're like I play Farm Simulator all the time. Yeah, I just like it. I just enjoy it. It's relaxing to me. Um, 
and just you know there are a few people that <laughs> that play with me so and we play truck simulator we play um like we got like a sid meyer's railroad you know it was like two bucks or some shit like that and uh get a bunch of people together and play that and you know just multiplayer games that everybody likes to play ramping up on it hard and of course, Word. I do want to make an announcement to everybody before we get uh, let you, well, we let you guys know what's on the show tonight. Um, in the Gems of War clan, uh, Leadum is no more. Um, we deleted his account, the account, and uh, but the 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 one that's going to be playing and I'm going to be playing it on stream is the Troll Fida. So if you guys know who that is. That's actually me. I've been playing on the iPad with my wife. We've been getting a whole bunch of decks and troops dealed up. So I'm going to start streaming that um, before, you know, in, in the beginning of the stream. So tonight on the show, guys, in the news, we're going to revisit an old friend. Lol. <laughs> Some I'm back. tidbits I'm here. Back. I'm back, by the way. I know you are. In case you missed me. No, I not really. But Gems of War is getting some major changes on Xbox One. But stay tuned, guys. That'll be in the obligatory news. A new show has launched, and we have some hotlines. You can call or text. Oh, don't forget those iTunes reviews. We want them, guys. Send us some. Um, we're revisiting Tech Talk again. Yeah, looking for looking at fads, trends, and whatever changes need to push the gaming industry technologies forward in ways that. It really kind of matter to 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 us, and we're going to discuss some video games that uh, have impacted us, and what we can learn from them as gamers and game developers. Like, sorry guys, I'm kind of stuffy today. <laughs> <laughs> Makes my deep my voice really deep though. Oh yeah, I kind of sound sexy today. I don't know, but before we get, yeah, that was yeah. You got to move that. Well, yeah, you're, you're not going by the script. You, you, you're, you're ad libbing, so that's your fault. No, 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 no. I'm Just, supposed to say all that and then introduce you. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, just to get it out at the top of the show. Man, he wants me to talk a lot. Yeah. Okay. But before but, we get know. into all this fun ahead, guys, I'm joined by someone. <laughs> <laughs> a little late for that now. Someone you might know. His name is SG from R9 Cast. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, the man. Yogi Zilla guy, too. Yeah. Oh, What's man. <laughs> wow. Did we just go back in time? Did we go into a wormhole? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, nobody's in the house. Robbie, Robbie, just, he's been hitting the Elder Scrolls Online hard with me. Mm -hmm. But as we're, we're, we're back on track now. <laughs> By the way, guys, if you guys are new to the show or if you haven't been here in a while, uh, welcome to the party. Because <laughs> it's crazy. So, you guys oh, like crazy woo. parties that are, yeah, woo woo, yeah. But uh, <laughs> this is the place to be. Horseplay Live is where geeks come to play. And I don't even say we want to play first. We get in trouble first and then we play. I think that's how it works most of the time with Yogi, anyway. But we are the flagship yeah. talk radio show for Geek Antics Network in collaboration with AllGames.com. Our show covers all the aspects of geek culture with a special focus on Indian strategy games, uh, technologies, rants, issues geeks face, um, you know, while gaming, of course, and, of course, community events that we try to put on or, you know, we be a part of. Did I mention we rant? No. A little bit. No, little bit. not. we don't really rant that much, do we? <laughs> Maybe a smidge. Yeah, a smidge. Uh, yeah. We even talk about food, guys. And on occasion, we will get into some retro and tabletop gaming as well. And the food, it's just because sometimes at about midnight, we all get kind of hungry, so we start talking about, you know, what we had for lunch or, you know, whatever. Yes. It's like the Food Network. <laughs> Yogi, tell everybody a, bit, a little bit more about the show, man. You know, we're a late night show. We're live and uncut. We're we're we're, we're mostly unscripted. Uh, and and uh, when I do make a script, because Obi likes a little structure, he decides to just do what he wants anyway. Jeez, the crazy things may happen. 
<laughs> we may say something offensive. We may fart on air. Uh, you know, it's all a good fun. Mm. Keep an open mind. You know, have fun with us. Because, you know, this is horseplay. With a name like that, you got to expect shenanigans and skullduggery. I like the word skullduggery. <laughs> skullfuckery? That? Is that what you said? No, skull, skullduggery. <laughs> skullduggery. I, I guess okay. skullfuckery in, in some Well, place. if we hurt your feelings, take the ladder. Take the skull fuckery and just get over it. Don't forget, guys, geeks, gamers, all you crazy people that watch this and listen to it. Horseplay Live is everywhere Thursday at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Pacific on Twitch channels Geeky Antics and simulcast it over there on Yogizilla. Horseplay Live replay is also available on Thursdays around 5 p.m. on allgames.com. You guys go to all games, hit the live or chat button about 5 p.m. It'll really help us out, too. Uh. Dot com. <laughs> Dot. Yeah. Um, I really don't have any rants today. Uh, I, 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 I'm I too sore to re be ready to rant. I could rant about my dog, how loud she freaking drinks, but it's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's she a... get dogs. They... <laughs> blah, blah, blah. God. That's, a, that's a bully breed thing. And does she get a lot of, like... Uh... A lot of the like slobber old but next to her no, bowl. No, 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 no. She doesn't get. She does. It's not a slobber. She just. God, ugh, it irritates me. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. It does. <laughs> Guys, we're gonna well, get right into it because we're just about th feeding dead air through through our asses. No. Oh, we're gonna get right God. into the obligatory news. And rants. Ding. Yeah. So, first off, we got two shows we want to talk about. There's a new show launched called Podcast AF. Podcast as, as fuck. We got Metric Methods, uh, Robbie Hondro, and Pete X Jr. Some some of the folks from uh, the Worst Radio Show crew. So uh, it's kind of like a little spinoff. And in their first episode, they talk about a division. Uh, they talk about it more from the PS4 perspective. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. But uh, 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 like they were saying, there were a lot of people. There were a lot of people having issues. Like people were cheating, shooting through walls, like wall hacking, and all this weird stuff. Like I didn't experience any of that on Xbox One. The only thing I got was like sometimes if I got all bloodied up, my screen would st would stay red even after I took a med kit, and everything just had like a red tint to it. But that's about it. And yeah, and then the party chat messing up. That's about it. I thought that um, the hacking stuff was only on um, PC. PC? I didn't think yeah. it was on PS4, but oh well. That's what I thought, but that's, that's, that's their great network. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, on PC, forget it. Like, the moment a game hits the market, even if it's a beta, there's already hacks for it. Mm. Crazy. We have another show coming up. It's uh, the new TSD. Not the Sunday no, Ghost. No, it's not the new TSD. They can't have those letters like that. That's I, mine. That's, that's what they're calling it. You have to take it up with, <sighs> with Sean and gang. I will. The so, it's called the Social Dozen. Yeah. I, I'll be on, on there on week four mm -hmm. with Chip, Matt, Matt, Matt Bradford, you know, Chip Silla, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Captain Chaos, mm -hmm. and Imes, Sean Imes. Sean, Sean Imes Fuller. You may know some of these names if you listen to enough podcasts. You definitely know them if you listen to a podcast. But, uh, yeah, it's a ro rotating host, uh, four hosts a week from a total of 13. It's a baker dozen, a baker's dozen. So different hosts each week. So that way, if someone calls out, there'll always be backups. So it's kind of a – it's a good model because, you know, people are flaky. They will – people will call out sick for anything. <laughs> but you can leave us a uh, voicemail and text about interesting things you find on the social media – uh, trends, things that happen in your life, anything, you know. It's, it's all about being social, being, bringing the social back to social media. The voicemail line is 201-762-4256. Again, 201-762-4256. And, yes, that is a Jersey number because uh, Normie, uh, she, she's very excited ab about that. She set that up. So make her happy, make her day, and leave some voicemail there. And uh, on our side, we have the Geeky Antics hotline for all our shows, particularly – this show right here that you're listening to, uh, that's 646-801-2149, 646-801-2149. Leave us, leave us voicemail or text us there. 
But uh, yeah, enough with plugs. Gems of War on Xbox One. Finally getting the major update that we got on the PC, Steam, Android, the uh, iOS side. Basically everything else but Xbox One. And they're finally um, doing the, the different keys, you know, where they break down the one iron key turns into one glory key, one event key, one blah, 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 whatever it is. Uh, reduced chest cost so you could open up more chests effectively. Um, bolt opening. Uh, that, this is what they confirmed. Now, what they haven't confirmed is if there will be synergies with uh, different troop types. And if we'll see uh, troop t traits, uh, passives, or the ascension system. I have mixed feelings about it because I kind of like the simplified approach on Xbox One. But uh, it would be nice to see more more synergies so you could switch things up a little bit. If you play the, the Xbox One version, all your troops feel very underpowered. And then I, when I, especially when you switch them between both versions, like, man, my team here is OP. And then I play in the Xbox One version, like, this is a long battle. Because it's just, you're not doing damage, really. But we'll see what happens there. Uh, Doom just confirmed the release date. Uh, May 13th, 2016. So, excited about that. Yeah. A lot of people don't, don't have it under radar, but I, I'm super excited. It's one of my, the few games I plan to get. Well, full, one of the few major releases I, I plan to get this year. Yeah. Uh, Wait, it's coming out in May, and that's before E3. Yay. Yeah. Uh, what are, because they're supposed to have a press conference they announced recently. Beth uh, not Bethesda. Yeah, Bethesda. Right? Yeah. So, uh, what will they announce there, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I thought they might, you know, if it was coming on, if it was coming out after, then it'd be like, oh, guess what? Doom's out today. Bam. But, uh, I guess not. So, but, uh, that first, what they showed last year, man, that looked so good. I was like, wow. Yeah, that's that's some PC power right there, though. That's not a that's not that PS4. I'm sorry, I can't. You can't. Nope. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah nah. I'll f I, I'm fine if the graphics are scaled back. I just want the no. gameplay, son. No, man. PC Master Race. <laughs> I mean, my PC can handle the the full version, but I want that multiplayer experience. Like, I, I want to see Doom on console, like done right. That excites me, man. And it looks like they, they took it back to the roots, you know, like that fast-paced action. Oof. And they threw in, like, a little bit of that, of that like, bullet storm flavor, like that arcade style kind of, you know, it felt like like watching bullet storm in, in a way, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like the way you do all these little combos, it, it's intense, man. I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be fun. And you can make your own maps too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and PFT's like Doom is PC at its roots, and it is. Yeah. I mean, that's that's. It started on the PC, and that's where it's gonna be best. But I wanna kind of, I wanna, I wanna, kind of be the ambassador for this on console, that, so people can see the shooter that the shooter that arguably started it all. Like I would say, Doom and like Tribes inspired oh, an Unreal Tournament inspired a lot of the shooters today. You know, and ever since then, everyone's pretty much been biting and not giving credit where it's due. Just saying. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's been a few uh, kind of uh, touchstones, I guess you can call it. I mean, I mean, you're right. PC, the Doom, and and, and all the others, Unreal. But then when Halo, Halo, when Halo came out on console, it was a jump off. And then when Call of Duty, uh, Four Modern Modern Warfare, came out. That was the second jump off, the second coming of the console shooter, I guess. So, but PC shooters have always been kind of, kind of, uh, yeah, the the it's, it's you know the roots, the the big the big brother looking over the shoulder of the little console brother. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, bu I buy that. You know, it, it, you know, Halo. Say what you want about Halo or Call of Duty, folks, but you. Know, they definitely brought awareness to what shooters can be. They they broke the mode. So no matter what those series have become, they they definitely need to get credit for that as well. So for those that missed it, the the division beta was extended for another 24 hours. Unfortunately, that wasn't it wasn't extended for a full week, and they apologized. They even sent a whole, whole blast out. They were like, you know, unprecedented demand and 
you know, uh, they wish more people could play, but there's going to be more beta sessions, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I, th I think they might do something mid-February, even before end of the month, but uh, we'll see. And again, like I said, they limited a lot of what you can do in the game, so they need to open it up. Let us see more. Uh, Steam Link. A lot of people have been talking about Steam Link, at least in, in my uh, circles of friends, and uh, they're getting good reviews uh, on it. You know, it's Steam Link is a nice little device. I, I forget what it retails for exactly, but I think it's like under 50 bucks. You know, and if you want to invest in a controller that you know that's compatible with it, you can enjoy Steam games in any room, virtually lag-free. Um, I've heard good things about people doing it on Wi-Fi. Of course, I always say if if the option's available to hardwire, that's always better. But the fact that Wi-Fi is serviceable, that's pretty cool. You can bring Steam anywhere you want, so that's that, that's pretty that's pretty sweet. I like that. I might I might I might consider one just to test it out. It's something, you know. The steam machines aren't working out, sadly, but... <laughs> steam machine, that's funny. Yeah, they had a lot of potential with that. Like, They should have made it an open platform and, and, and make it a console that's modular and accessible to make, e to make PC gaming less elitist and more friendly for console gamers. That's what it should have been. Yeah, there's... The the only way to make a Steam machine, the, it doesn't. It's either a console or a PC. If you make a Steam machine, it, it's ultimately going to be a PC. And I think the flaw in this, the, not so much the flaw in the Steam machine concept. It's just uh, everyone's in the mindset of this is how a PC should be, and it's been the same form factor for you know thirty years. Uh, but now with all these little uh, little mini PCs coming out, the Raspberry Pi and stuff, I think it's going to start changing a little bit as, as far as the form factor. And once once that kind of blows open and everyone is accepting of uh, something other than a tower being a, you know, a serious PC, gaming PC. Yeah. And something like a, something like a, the Steam Machine concept can work where you have, you know, a little bit of different form factor and you could just... You could you could open it up and plug in just a regular PCI card, whatever it looks like, ten years from now, and it'll work. You know, it's, it's still gonna be a PC. It's just gonna have ports you can plug into and stuff. Yeah, but you're talking about the the how it's received by PC gamers. This right. is not for the PC gamers. I mean, it might be for the PC gamer that wants doesn't feel like building another computer and wants to put a, a gaming PC somewhere else in their house. But it's really for the console gamers that have always felt that PC gaming is too expensive. And, and wanted to play all the games that don't come out on console, you know? Yeah. Cause that's, the, that's the real problem with PC gaming is that you hear people, like, I don't know if you keep up with VGO, but, like, Michelle, he's always like, you got to spend, like, a kajillion dollars to get a gaming PC if you want to do it right. And I'm like, no. And people always give that kind of advice. And it's, it's bad because, really, in this day and age, 500 bucks straight up, you get a computer that can play most of today's games. Mm. They won't play Ultra Settings. I don't know about yeah. that. I I priced it out on on, P, on PC part finder. Of course you did. Five hundred to eight hundred, you could build a, a nice computer that's well, upgradable. Yeah. You know, and will last you a few years. I next know? my next computer, if I get what I want, it's gonna be about fifteen hundred. But I'm getting some huge, like dual graphics cards. You know, a huge like yeah. It's I need an oversized case for it. It's gotta be custom made. When are you going to get that? When are you planning to get that one? Within the next two years. Oh, okay. I know it's pretty far away, but I just got this one, so. Within the right, next but two that's, years. that's a high-end computer. Like, yeah. A mid-range a... computer it doesn't cost that much, you, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, do you want mid... If you're going to go for mid-range, you might as well just get a console, because that's pretty much what they're... What's happening now. And and I know it's not... It's it's more on the developers and not so much the hardware because you get an ultra PC, you could push way more than what the consoles can do. But the developers aren't, I, I think, except for the division because you see the difference between the PC version and the console versions. I'm like, man, I wish I had a PC that could play that because console the the PC version of division looks bananas. I'm like, wow, look at them piles of garbage. Look at them graphics. And then I look at the console version. I'm like, oh, it's just. It's just some paper on the side. It's not. It's not even. It's not even as good. But, 
but yeah. <laughs> well, there's some key differences too because yeah, you can make the argument well, if you're gonna spend that much money to just get a console. The difference is you could upgrade your PC and it'll last you much longer than a console will. It'll still be relevant years down the road. Yeah, and, but you, and 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 that, and that spending the same amount that you would on a console, you can still do more with that PC, way more. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's the ultimate argument, but um. And the games are I cheaper. Think, I mean, I think if you're going 500 or even 600, I mean, closer to 800, you, you'd see a great difference. But um, you, like you said, you have to upgrade that costs more, and you still won't be at the tippy top. And I think that's like if you're gonna go in on PC, you're gonna you gotta go in, and that's what Michelle's mentality. And I guess that's what you're going to do, Obi, is just, just, well, just it's, max it out. Well, and then you got to think about what you're doing with it. Like, my, my PC is my base of operations. No matter if I get an Xbox, if I get a PS4, no matter what I get, I can plug it into my PC and stream from my PC. If, as long as it's tip-top shape, and it, yes, it, it might cost, like, it, it would cost, if I were to go out and just buy it, it'd be 1500 to $1,700 computer. 1500 to 2000 I already have. We're we're already looking at the some of the motherboards are going to be coming out in the next year or so. Um, we're going to be getting a couple of some beast. Like I'm going to have have to have different three different cooling systems in that thing. <laughs> oh wow! Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah. What you got? Like liquid and then uh, and then uh, fans just... and yeah. It's 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 got to be a custom made box, a, a custom made case. And we're going to do a plexi. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be fucking nice. Is it gonna like transform and like do your laundry and stuff? And then... Yes, yes, that is gonna be one of the um, <laughs> that is gonna be one of the uh, side missions. Uh, it has to be tuck, tuck you in at night. Good night, Obi. Wait, wait. Thank you. <laughs> oh man, but you know we actually had a, a, a extensive discussion about this uh, economy of gaming, and and we compared the prices. The console gaming and PC gaming are pretty much on par with each other price-wise. In fact, the total cost of ownership of a PC is cheaper than console. The only benefit now to console is it's you know you go there with because where your friends are and it's an easy out of the box experience and it's uniform. That's that's the key. It's not a money issue anymore. And you know, and I, I get as someone that that worked many years in IT, when people go, oh, you have to spend this much to really go all in on a PC game, I want to slap people. Because I, I, I used to build networks. You know, before Two World Trade Center went down, I used to build their, 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 all their IDFs, their, 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 all their, like, uh, back, the server rooms, all that stuff. I know how web clusters work, how server farms work, all that stuff. I know how much you need. If you, the thing is, people look at an out-of-box experience, and they don't know how to get the most out of a computer, so they just throw money at it. Well, so there's the reason they're, they're spending fifteen hundred, two thousand <laughs> because they don't know how to tweak the settings and get the most out of the games. But I'm telling you, five to eight hundred, you have a decent computer, and then you can just upgrade it little by little if you want to get the max settings. But someone that wants to just go into PC gaming and get a better experience in console doesn't have to go all in like that, and they yeah. can still have they can still have an investment that will, they could build organically. With a console, you get what you get. There's no upgrades, really. It, yeah. that, that, you're done. You, you want to upgrade it, buy a, the new version of the console. Yeah. And I think that, I mean, I guess the last thing on this is that the the consoles are always a step behind. Well, they, I think this generation specifically, but I think last generation they were right on par or maybe a little bit ahead. But, you know, the PC, well, I can't say that, but I th I'll say on par, but they they've, uh, quickly fell behind. What, but, what? like, What's the average generation of a of a console? SG. Uh, now it's um. But three sixty uh, PS. No 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 no. Yeah, from the from average is probably six years. Six years. Taking into account now, the last generation. Right, right. So then you can play your games and you can do this for about six years and until you know it's time to have another one, right? Give it six months and your PC is half of half out of the loop. Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, and, and think of the time has... frame of what what progresses, how fast. PC. And it's, I think it's it's speeding up more now. A six year computer. Um, you know how no, old no, no. and outdated yeah. that would be. I have. I think <laughs> I have a six year computer. Well, I had one; it died. But um, I mean, my point is that like exactly. uh, like the four K uh or or 
or the, all the ultra wide uh, settings and stuff uh-huh. that are, are emerging and everybody's, you know, Michelle is talking about it, a lot of people are talking about it. And, and I went on YouTube and I was like, let me look at these fools. They got the, the super PC set up for 2016. And I look at, I'm like, man, they got these, they got these setups with, with 240 inch screens with the, with, <laughs> I'm like, what? It's so pretty. And I'm like, wow. Nope. And that, and that's just like you can't do that on a Xbox One. You can't do that on a PS4. It's impossible. So right, it's just a, it's a little bit of a different world. But you know, like you said, Obi, it's it's more than just games. And that's that's one thing that uh, people uh, overlook when when you're talking about PC versus console. Right. And why a lot of ga- a lot of gamers prefer PC because they're not just playing games. They're doing all kinds of stuff. They're making a living on their PC. So you know, you gotta you gotta put in you got to invest in that stuff you know it's all good right well and and you know and like i like yogi said earlier i mean a lot of people are just getting the consoles because of what because it's friends and it's really easily accessible now i, I wouldn't care about the easy access because it's going to be at my pc anyway but it would be something that i want to get on there and play games with with friends that have the games you know, because not everybody, a lot of people that I that I know and that are from the gang, from Geeky Antics, they all play Xbox. Yeah. Like, a lot of them. And I'm like, damn, I wish I could go and play with those guys. Like, the, like all the Nipples of Fate guys. They're all the Xbox guys. <laughs> you know? Um, and that's why I can't do anything with them, because a lot of them are Xbox. So, you know, just to have that. But, it, yeah, to... to if if you don't want to deal with all the pricing and, and putting it together or buying it out of the box, make sure you have upgrades, blah, 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 blah. Your console is the best way to go. We've had this war before, and I yeah. think PC still won. So let's just play it to rest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one, one last thing. I think uh, the PC side is also it's – a, it's a certain type of person, like someone who likes to tinker, like like guys who are into cars and like, oh, I'm going to get a carburetor or I'm going to – I'm gonna put a super flow max engine flow max. Uh, anyway, you know, they, it's, really it's, You're talking it's, about it's maxi more... pads now. No, I'm not. I was, I was thinking about said... flow master. <laughs> and you said, said flow max. max. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but flow master, you know, the, the good. You get the blah, 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 you know, get all that stuff. You know, it's like car guys, or it's like or like guys who like to build again. furniture. Like that, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you know it, it's i i kind of have that bug because i like to take stuff apart and look inside and stuff mm-hmm. but i usually end at the taking apart stuff and i never put it back together so i'm i'm not the best person to tinker with a pc but i i understand that mentality of of building and and making it better and messing with it and stuff so right well it, I, and i'm not even a guy that likes to do that either I, I hate taking it apart my com- I mean I, I I take it apart to clean it enough to clean it like I I'll take the video the RAM out because I know how to put it back you know I'll, I know I take the video card out and clean it because I know how to put it back but anything else in there I bring it to a friend and he does all that shit just because but I love PC gaming I love what you can do with it with the like yeah. the streaming and the content you can create with a PC is just and that's what I want to eventually do. Um, in a way that I can, I can just, I can create my content. That's all I want to do. It's the Wild West in your house. Well, I mean, there's things that are coming up. Like eventually, you'll, you, everybody will start seeing Fifi and and a lot of her um, Gems of War games and and some of the troops. Like she, uh, if she could have recorded it, she would have. But she had a three hour match the other day. What the hell? Yeah, it was Goblin Troop versus Goblin Troop. Oh, boy. Yeah. She says she got hers up to, the other guy started at almost 100. She got hers up to 379, and he got his up to almost 1,000, and she almost beat him. It was, oh, holy crap. That's when he true damage. Mm-hmm. And all that armor doesn't matter. Yep. I guess I gotta play that game. Do do do. It's a fun game, man. You know, people look at it. Oh, it's a match of three games. Like, but it's yeah, it's but got it's, a lot of depth to it. It's not just a match three game. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I I'm me, and I I even like it. I I do. It was uh It's it's just I don't know. It's one of those games. 
It's just one of them games. Okay, sorry, I was gonna sing a song, but I won't go there. But Obi, uh, one last bit of thing in the news. We got a few uh, deals, some shout outs, and then we're gonna talk some more tech and gaming. But uh, this last news bit, uh, League of Legends is going through a lot of changes. They got, uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, they have a League of Legends community podcast now. It's about six, seven episodes in. Mm-hmm. And in the latest episode, they were talking about uh, changes to Champion Select and Team Builder. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and they kind of, they talk about some of the philosophies, uh, design logic beside, behind the decisions they made. And uh, one of the biggest things that we always talked about from the beginning of, of this show, the how the, one of the reasons there's so much toxicity is because people don't get to play the role that they want. And then they get mad at the person that plays the role that they wanted to play, the position they wanted to be in, and they don't do as well as they, they think they and could. And they have. troll the whole fucking game. Yes. So they, they, they're they addressing that by doing things like the dynamic queue and, uh, you know, uh, being able to choose your role right beforehand. What do you think about these changes, OB? Well, I recently, like I said before, I've been getting on and, and doing some stuff like with, with Doc and, um, and um, some bitch would damn clan name uh Cerberus assault over in the eu and then i've been playing a little bit over here with some of the gang members and i like it actually that i can just go in and i don't have to fight for some dumbass that's with his friend you know or some shit like you know and then make me play something i really don't want to yeah um or make me play a champion like they banned th- you know my three support champions i like the most they banned Nautilus, Thresh, and Blitzcrank. Like, who am I going to fucking play now? That's all oh, yeah, I play. They, they I got know. rid of the, uh, the the captain having all the power. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, you know, if, I, if I'm on a game and I'm with somebody, like if somebody's going to jungle or, in, or I have an ADC and we have a jungler or something like that or a mid or something like that and we do start playing some games... Um, then I can, you know, make sure I can get one of my picks. It makes me want to play the game more, I'll tell you that. Well, um, uh, I will be on it tomorrow, actually, if you would like to jump on at some point. We'll go back to our roots. I remember what people used to say. I remember people used to listen to our podcast, and from, like, just a couple episodes that they happened to tune into, like, a few minutes, they were like, oh, yeah, they're a League of Legends podcast, and they talk about PC gaming, too. I'm like, we're so much more than that. <laughs> yeah. If, if depending on what happens, I might play a little couple tonight, but I've been, like, uh, I played one live match, or two live matches this whole time. Like, I play against bots, trying to just get my, you know, uh, I was playing some ADC the other day, which, in a bot match... You can't really set out anything up or play the right way. It's just a push and win. That's all it is. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. By the way, folks, some quick deals and freebies and here uh, on today's uh, Deals for Cheap Bastards. Again, that's it at the end list. You want it? Message me, Yogizilla, on Twitter and Steam. You don't mean and... it, guys. I've been messaging you in for three weeks. And... You don't really want it, do you? I, I guess not. Do you really want? Okay. No, I don't. Oh, uh, but don't be like that. Maybe I'll get an extra copy and, and then I'll give you. I'm one being another, like that. One. It's a, it's a really good game. It's a so all right. We'll we'll figure it out then. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Did we even mention like we kind of just glanced over the whole thing with David Bowie and uh, Alan Rickman? Yeah. But uh, you know, I know we're, it's, it's late, but. It still boggles me. It's, it's crazy. You know, they both die at the same age, the same causes. Illuminati. Then, yeah, right? Half-Life 3 confirmed. Hey, I'm just saying. But I've been, well, I, I've been looking at some stuff about, like, Robin Williams and, you know, hey. Yeah, there, there, there's, there's a lot of conspiracy theories about... Uh, Illuminati confirmed. Yeah, we won't go there. We won't go oh, there, yes, there. we are. We're doing it. It's a slippery it. slope. But... You know, in memory of David Bowie, uh, Omicron, the Nomad Soul, uh, it's a 1999 game from Square Enix, is uh, free to download now in the Square Enix store, so make sure you pick that up. I never really played it. I've seen people play it. It looks kind of crazy. It looks like, uh, kind of like, I don't know, cyberpunkish. It's, it's pretty wild. But then again, you know, if, if you've seen Labyrinth, then you know what to expect from David Bowie. It's, you know, <laughs> True that. Ziggy Stardust type stuff. I was like, wow, his stuff is always out there. So that's, that's kind of what I like. It's trippy. It's like, am I am I high? How did I get high? 
Am I? Is this the real life? <laughs> Where am I? Like yo, I'd be like, I ain't even take none. I'm fucked up. What the hell? Mm -hmm. Dude, like I used to love. Uh, I used to like watching the Beatles uh, Yellow Submarine cartoon. I don't know why. I always liked that thing. It was absolutely. It made no sense whatsoever. But I always loved watching that. Like, I'm like, what were these guys thinking? <laughs> some of them, yeah. Some of them, I. They're really, really. Wow. Off the wall. Well, yeah. well, you know, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, you know what that is, right? Mm hmm. Talking about LSD trip. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. I, I know. I said yes. Oh, I didn't hear you. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. I'm trying to do a treasure map. Can you leave me alone? Okay. Enjoy your treasure map. The gems of Warrior. Wait, wait. Good call <laughs> just, back. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but hey, taking it back to the old school, mm -hmm. if you never played Unreal Tournament you want to know what the hype is all about, it's an updated version of the game now, and it's free. So you can download that, Google it or Bing it, and you can find it. Uh, Tribes Ascend from High Res Studios is still going strong after about four years of being out. Uh, so check that out. Uh, again, these are like some of the grandfathers, you could say. These series were kind of gave birth to a lot of today's modern shooters. Um, and just re reinforcing this, Amazon Prime. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you have another reason to get excited. 20% off video game pre-orders. If, if you didn't get the, the memo, yes. Oh, I got the memo. Yeah. They kind of yeah. stuck it in there. But yeah, I found that I was surprised, like... Cause they don't even like they up they update your shopping cart if you have pre-orders like they have the best price guarantee but you don't always see it when you just look at the the like the overview if they like click into it and like oh updated price yes right so no, I, I I love dude I I have nothing bad ever to say about Amazon Prime if you get a chance to get it get it it's yeah I don't so even do worth it. As much shopping as the average person does, and I still it still pays for itself like tenfold. Like it's so worth it. Yep, yep. Uh huh. But some shout outs, folks. We haven't done shout outs in the past uh, few weeks. I want to shout out Tangent Bound Network. Uh, expect some mashup shows and crossovers eventually. Uh, we keep talking about the, UN the UCL Unified uh, Combat League. We're about a month away from a major announcement, but if you're into like MMA and Competitive gaming, sports, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, go, go give it a visit at unifiedcombatleague.com and keep an eye out for uh, new updates. Uh, also, they have a Facebook page as well. Uh, Horrible Gamers is now part of the All Games family, so congrats to Imes and, and Jesus on that. Uh, and as always, if you want to support our network, help us keep the light on and do cool things like giveaways and whatnot. You know, there's ways to support us. Uh, just go over to geekyantics.net for slash uh, sponsors or geekyantics.net for slash donate. Uh, just go to geekyantics.net. You know, click around. There's, there's things there. There's, you know, advertisements that help us, uh, you know, subsidize things. Uh, there's offers and forums and messaging. It's all kinds of stuff to check out. So go exploring. It's, it's a pretty cool site. I know it looks a little janky, a little dated. That's kind of deliberate. And that's also because I'm lazy. And that's all the shout outs. I said, do you have any shout outs today, OV? Nope. No, all right. I do. Um, I do want to. Actually, I don't. Actually, yes, I do. I do want to shout out my co host, my new co host on the Sunday Dose. This is the real TSD, the Sunday Dose on Sunday at 9 p.m. right here on Geeky Antics with Morgana Freya. We got some exciting stuff. We're gonna start. I still gotta talk to her about it. I think she's gonna like it. But um, we're gonna have some fun next show. Twenty first. Yes, Morgana Freya. That's my shout out for the day. Yeah. <laughs> good talk. Yeah, good talk. Is he there? I'm here. I think I think Obi I think Yogi died. Yeah, I think uh, his computer ate him or his boo boo cat or something. I don't know. I uh, something. Happened. I don't know what's up. What whatever. But SG's here. Everybody's here. Hi. I don't even I don't even know where he was at. I was trying to follow yeah. along, but it just didn't work. Mm. I, I think that was, the, that was just the shout outs and yeah, shout outs and stuff. I don't have the 
I don't have the doc. But uh, I got some shout outs. I want to shout out geekyantics.net. I want to shout out. I've heard of them before. Yeah, they're all right. I want to shout out Horseplay because, you know, Horseplay. You got PlayStation. You got Playground. You know, Play ho- Horse. You can play Horse. Do you have a basketball hoop and a couple of people? Well, you can play Horse by yourself if you want, if you're lonely. So, a whole bunch of things. Uh, <laughs> That's good to I, know. Yeah, yeah. No. What? What did I miss? You missed a whole bunch, dude. It was funnier and shit. Okay, we can get back to business now. You'll have to listen on the podcast. I know. It's good. I, I do re-listen to the shows, too, because there's always stuff that I end up missing somehow. There's a lot of things that you've been up missing. That, Just they saying. tell you, when I drink lots of water, I, I swear I feel like a baby with a little tiny bladder, man. I know, Blue. I agree. Hey, there's Blue Blue. She's oh. like, meow, meow. She, she wants to be part of the podcast. There's always Blue Blue. <laughs> Not always. Oh, you know, always. Two out of five shows or so. Two out of five. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay, maybe three out of five. <laughs> anyway. Mm. So what are we up to? What four, we four and a half out of five? More. We're. I was just letting everybody know that, uh, don't forget, guys, to uh, help us out and support one of the oldest podcast networks out there. Um, it's where we play our... our um, Horseplay Live over on allgames.com. Around 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. GMT. Uh, it's an easy way to support the show, and it really helps us out, and it really doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't cost you a damn dime. You can play, put, it, put us up, put us in the background, mute us, then go back 20 minutes later and shut it off. I know we don't care, but they would really help us out. Yogi? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we're ready to move along. Now we were yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah. we were gonna talk more about uh, te- the future of technology, kind of get more into that. But we kind of talk about at mm-hmm. top of the show. Mm-hmm. You know, we touched upon, uh, you know, the direction of how how fast PC gaming is moving, and I, and that's true. But at the same time, I feel like with PC gaming, they still as they push forward, they still keep the common denominator in mind. <sighs> you know, it, the only. <laughs> Yes, quickie. They don't want to get too deep into it, but I, you know, I think <laughs> the only way people deep. feel, <laughs> the only way people feel like they uh, have to really upgrade uh, is if they I want the max settings. Deep. Oh, oh B. I want, I want to give you the max <laughs> settings. Yeah. Max. Coming in hot, <laughs> sweetheart. Well, well, SG mentioned the whole twenty to nine uh, aspect ratio. Uh, and I think 21 to 9. 20, 21 to 9. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Hi, Yogi, get it right, nine. dude. What the hell? My bad. But, you know, and I think it's cool. But, again, it goes back to what we were talking about, that, like, these things are nice. And, yeah, field, extra field of vision is cool. But it's also the, the, the bad side people don't want to talk about. The people that don't have that wide format are missing out on that field of vision. Mm. And it gives people with a better hardware an advantage. Mm-hmm. So that That's See, let's, like, I want to see the core experience improve first, you know, and then let, let it plateau a little bit as far as the hardware goes before we start pushing all these things, you know. Well, I mean, I think that's that's part of the trend going forward is that 21 by 9 might become part of the standard, like how 720 was the first HD. Now 1080p is true HD or full HD or whatever. Um, now, uh, 4K is UHD or SUHD or whatever the heck they call it. it. So, <laughs> t- 21.9 is it might be what 1080p is to today. You know, five years from now, 21.9 might be just oh, you got 21 by nine. Uh, I got 35 by two, or I don't know what the what's gonna be by then. But you know, I think it, it might go that way if enough um, if if enough uh, like developers and well, I don't know. It's it's really about the TV manufacturers, honestly. It's not really about um, uh, PC side. So if TV goes twenty one by nine, that's where everybody else is gonna follow. Uh, I don't know, cause yep. look how long it took TV content to catch up with with uh, seven twenty and ten eighty p. 
they're yeah. still catching up. There's still places that don't offer full 1080 content. No, well, I'm not talking about like the stations or 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 providers. I'm talking about the man- manufacturers. If Sony oh, yeah, and yeah. Samsung and all these guys, they make you know they're already making wide screens and they're making UHDs, 4K and stuff. All you gotta do is change the aspect ratio. They change it from well, some of them are wider, but if they change from 16 by nine, which is a standard, to 21 by nine, and everybody changes it, and no, like you know, there's no, there's no SD TVs out there anymore. I mean, I can't find a tube TV to, for <laughs> nothing. So that's done. So everything 16 by nine, everything is usually 1080p. I don't. They, you might be able to find a 720p screen out there but i highly doubt it i mean there might be out there somewhere but they're hard to find so you know moving forward once that happens if it happens uh which would be cool because i, I kind of like how it looks but you know it's just it's just a uh, evolution i mean i mm-hmm. i i honestly feel like the pc market is actually pushing it and then when the tv manufacturers see the the trends they're like let's jump on that bandwagon and bring it to the wider market that's what i've been seeing yeah you know, in yeah. the past decade at least, you know, because uh, the the content isn't really there on, 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 unless you're doing gaming, to, let's be honest. Yeah, but it's it, not there, yeah. But the, the, the flip side of this, too, is there is such a thing as too much detail. Another nah. thing people don't want to talk about. Yes, there is. No, right, me... but that's you talking about like the the porno peoples and the no, girls be like, no. yo, man. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I can't, you can't be putting that camera all up on my stuff. I, you know, I got this, you know, and then they got to go and fix it and, and post and that, That's and true. Stuff. That's true, too. I wasn't even thinking about that side because, yeah, because, like, remember when things weren't first HD, so it seemed like, whoa, they got wrinkles. Oh, man, they're not mm-hmm. as attractive. But, like, there's another side, like, for, on the gaming side. Let's talk more about the gaming oh, side. Oh, okay, okay. Rainbow Six Siege. I'm going to use Rainbow Six Siege as an example. If you play on Ultra Settings, which I could do on my computer, did it not cost $1,500, by the way? All right. <laughs> it looks beautiful. Oh wow! I got ambient occlusion and every and all all, all this grass is like animated and stuff. Cool, yeah, but I'm actually that. at a disadvantage playing against people that are playing at lower settings because they can see me hiding in a bush because I, they're playing a low setting and it doesn't render it as detailed. Oh right, right. <laughs> so there's a lot of places where that happens. People talk about that, you know. So. Whoa. When you're playing competitive, you know, I mean, you use whatever edge you can get, right? So if you turn off all your settings, you get you get more frames per second. Uh, you know, you get it's it's just that's that's a whole different thing. If you're just looking for performance, that's one thing. But if you're playing competitive, then it's a whole different ball game. Yeah, I, I mean, well, performance I'd put on a whole different arena than than, you know, super ultra visuals because they don't always go hand to hand, you know. It's hard to get both of those to line up. But, he, you know, and it's funny too because a lot of people that have these beast computers, what's the game they end up playing? CSGO or League of Legends, which are not hey, really resource I resent that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just saying, like, it's like, hey, I got this beast $4,000 computer. What are you playing? Uh, super Mario Brothers. I, I got the NES emulator. Dude, like, man, I'm playing really? Minecraft at th- <laughs> 300 frames per second. So good. I got all the chunks, and all my chunks are loading all the time. Low chunks. <laughs> I can see all the block physics. Look at all the particle effects. Uh, uh, it, you know, so it, 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 it just goes to show, though, that we're at a point like that when people get into the, 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 the comparing specs, it's just penis size comparison. But what it really comes down to is, I think we're really deep down the side. We don't want to admit it to stuff, but we're looking for something fresh outside of the hardware. We're looking for that, that, that hotness, you know. And, and, and we're not. And, and these, the, a lot of these hardware changes are gimmicks at the end of the day. Like, watch the next thing. You know, we, all this stuff about wearable tech, right? Google Glass and uh, you know the VR headsets and you know uh, you know swap, smart watches and whatever. This is stuff for people to throw money at. And of course, the more people throw money at that stuff, because they got you know, disposable income, the more those things become standardized, you know. Yeah. But the next thing's going to happen, we're going to see chair tech. That's going to be the next thing. It's yeah. going to be like $1,200 chairs. This is the DX Racer EX. This one jiggles your balls. It wiggles. Mm. It gyrates. It farts. And it, and it, and it, and it, and it I don't know, it, it touches your taint. I don't know. It's going to have some kind of feature mm. set. And people are going to be like, wow, it does all of that. It's got not two, not three, but four cup holders. 
You know, yeah. people are gonna be like, take my money here. Well, hey, you gotta have your hot, and you gotta have your cold, and then maybe have uh, some chips in the other one, and then uh, extra one just in case. It's four is about right. Yeah, I, I get that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm saying like that, that's cool on the surface, but I want that stuff to come after they like really get some the games right because there's a, still a lot of buggy shit out there. This game is underperforming. Yeah. There's a lot of BS out there, and I, I'm gonna go back to what we said. You know, you know, last week, the, the, we're kind of becoming apologetic for video games. It's oh. kind of like, this game is visually stunning. Oh, what a great story. But people are not talking about the gameplay. It's like, all right, but what about the gameplay? It was visually stunning. It's like, what is this, movie? Are, are we are we, watch, are we judging movies now? Like, yeah, why like, are we? Uh, that's like Battlefront. I mean, that's, sorry to cut you off, but. I mean, Battlefront looks gorgeous. I'm like, wow, that's so gorgeous. Look at that. It looks like Star Wars, and it sounds <laughs> like Star Wars. It's Star Wars. But I'm like, that's so boring. It's kind of cool to watch, but I was watching. I was like, and I played it. I played the um whatever beta it was, and that's so boring. I was like, this is the most plain. At this is the most basic game. You know, you heard the basic bitches. This is the basic <laughs> bitch of a game. I was like, man, this is. Oof, but it looks pretty, but I can't play this, and I never bought it, and that's what it is. So, yeah, I agree with you, man. You got to you gotta go beyond uh, the graphics. So all the graphics holes out there, PS4 guys, usually. Because <laughs> um, they're looking for something to hang on to. That's really what it comes down to. It's like, yeah. I spent this much on my computer, or I spent this much on my console. Oh, my console could do this, and yours can't. It's like, But are, are you having fun with it? Like, What are you playing on it? Like, yeah. That's, you know, they're overcompensating. That's what I, I think comes down to. And, and it's sad. We're making it easy by throwing money at all these gimmicks. We're making it easy for for you know developers and and manufacturers to just be like, I don't, I'm not gonna bother to come up with something new. I'm just gonna one up. Everything's gonna be one the one up game. This is mm-hmm. slightly better graphics. This is you know a slightly higher polygon count. You know, oh now you get to put this helmet on your head and you get to see it's a TV, but now it's a TV that just sits on your face. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, I think is there is there a gray area between gimmick and innovation? Because I'm, there I'm, is. I'm thinking about, yeah, I'm thinking about VR and, and AR and um, even whether it's new gameplay systems or even uh, graphics to an extent, because there is value in super nice, pretty graphics. But like like we just said, it it's not just about that. It ha- it's part of a whole equation that needs to be correct. But like, like I, I still think that VR is is a gimmick more than it is an innovation because it's it's, it's twenty years old, twenty something yeah. years old. Yep. So it's it's not a new th- it's not a new idea. It's not a new thing. It's been done before. Now the graphics are better. That's it. Uh, faster computers. You get you get a better gra- look at those graphics all in your face, and mm-hmm. and that's fine. And I think it's cool because I thought it was cool back then, but it was really crap back then. <clears throat> but uh, I, I, I don't see the innovation in it yet. I think that parts, I think that uh, going down the VR road will uh, birth innovation in different ways. And I think I said this on my show last time that um, the, I think that, the most the more successful VR stuff will be the stuff that is self-contained, whether it's uh, the Hololens AR stuff or whatever el- whoever else is doing AR stuff. But it has to be self-contained. It can't be uh, tethered to a, a, a computer or a console because that yeah. that's 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 uh, inhibiting any type of uh, expansion beyond just sitting in front of your TV or your con- what's the what's the difference between having a VR set on your head or just looking at your TV. I mean, 3D, and you can move the the camera with your head. That's pretty much it. So, yay, yay. <laughs> and, and I still think it's cool, but it's not. I mean, I'm not gonna buy one because it's gonna be too much money. But I'm I'm looking forward to when things are, you know, when I, you know, the whole cell phone VR stuff. I know it seems like it's not gonna be as good, and it probably won't be. But you know, like I said before, uh, the 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 rate that technology is is accelerating cell phones are going to be really powerful i mean they're already really powerful computers but they're going to be so much more powerful that it'll be more feasible to have a cell phone vr app or apparatus or or something like say if it's a ps4 
with an Ericsson phone, super powerful Ericsson phone, and that's your PSVR, not the PSVR that they're selling you uh, this year. You know, something you got to plug into your PS4. It's just a phone that you plug in, you sync it up to your console, boom, you're good to go. You don't have to, you, you know, it's your phone too, and it's VR. And that's, you know, that's where it's it's melding two uses like PCs, how PC is a gaming and PC is a utility device and stuff. So I think it's going to be more cell phone, VR, portable stuff than this blocky connect your head to a freaking box thing. Yeah, and we could go on and on. But I want to get on to some of the actual games that uh, yeah, yeah. that we feel innovated, that weren't just gimmicks and they made an impact for us, at least personally. But uh, I think I want to say two, two things. First, Star Wars Battlefront actually isn't a bad game, but it's something you enjoy in, in small doses. And that's actually what I want from it. Like, when I play I, it, I'm immersed in that world, I'm having fun, and then I go back to what, whatever my addiction at the time is. Yeah, it's not a bad game. It's just not a super great, awesome game. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> well, it's, it's EA. It's, it's EA I... being... It's EA being EA, though. Like, they always... They do this. They water down the games so that you'll buy the DLC and the expansions and... Well, that was the main... That was the, the kicker with that game. I was like... It's a sixty dollar game plus fifty dollars, one hundred and ten dollars. I know, and and all the good stuff seems to be in that fifty dollars season pass stuff. And I'm still, I'm like, if all that stuff was in the main game, I'd be like, all right, I get it. But nah, they, yeah, they, they that whole the the way that they they shipped that game and how they marketed it, not marketed it, but how they sold it was, uh, I didn't like it. I didn't like it one See, bit. That's the overall problem with the gaming industry is that the value is being taken out of the core product and yeah. then, and then make us pay for stuff that normal in the old days would have been shipped with the release product. Yeah. And that's why this is why I don't like this is why I don't like all this hardware pushing because it's it's creating a smoke screen while we're so excited about virtual reality and all these gimmicks we're not realizing that we're being fed the same shit over and over again. That's the problem. Yeah. And the, the, you know the the other thing I was going to say is that I'm not saying that these hardware things are bad in themselves. I just want to see more on the software side and the experiences actually enhanced. Like it, it just bottled my mind. Like people rag on Connect all the time, but there's better ideas and more potential there with Connect and things like that than there is with virtual reality right now. Yeah, because it that actually changes how you play the games, and it, it's it's more than a gimmick. You know, to me, virtual reality is. It's still a gimmick right now until the software catches up, and that's that's why I think the difference is between innovation and and uh, and, and you know the gimmicks. You yeah. know, it's actually creating new experiences, and it, is it creating opportunities to create some new experiences, or is it just yeah. more of the same with a slightly different twist? Yeah, and I think that's the that's one of the important things, like uh, VR and, and uh, particularly how how can it be used outside of games. Um, like for a utilitarian use, whether it's doctors doing surgery or, or, uh, muse or artists painting stuff or whatever. I know AR, like HoloLens, they kind of, uh, delved into that. And then they had the, I don't know if you guys saw it, but it was a new, uh, they said, this is how you watch football with HoloLens. And then they showed people with like a whole bunch of people with HoloLens. I'm like, they must be have a lot of money, but, um, they sitting around the living room. And they look at a coffee table, and then the stadium appears on the coffee table, and it's, you see all the players playing on the. And then they turn it around, and then they, it, and then it's, it's it was kind of cool. Yeah, and I see all meant to be out of the league. Now that that creates a lot of opportunities for some interesting things. Right, and, that and, excites me. Right, and it excites me too. And, and that's the difference between AR and VR. But I don't want to discount VR all all the way because there's super smart people out there. They'll find um, different ways to use VR other than uh, games, other than what Sony is pushing, other than what uh, Oculus is pushing. So I'm not going to give up on it uh, quite yet, but that's the thing. What, what else can you do with it besides playing games? And that's, I think that's, that'll be one of the main things. If, if it can do more than just that, then it will more likely be, uh, a successful product because you know you have people who buy it for other reasons than just playing games because there are more people out there than just gamers. This is true. This is very true. But one one last thing before we go out to our feature discussion, 
I know we're getting close to that point again. <laughs> we got so much to talk about. Uh-huh. But if you want to see a good idea of what a- AR can be, two games I recommend, Ingress and, Zo- and Zombies Run. That There's some really cool things in there that really make you think, like, these guys are really trying to create new experiences and taking advantage of this technology, not just saying, hey, this is a gimmick we exploit. And that's the kind of stuff that excites me. Like, with Ingress, the whole thing with Ingress is that the, it, it creates treasures in the real world, and you walk to them to claim these treasures for your faction, and you have these virtual battles. And there's more to it than that. But imagine with, like, an AR, like, headset and seeing an overlay and, and experiencing the real world completely differently. And people would probably look like you're, like a, you're a crackhead, like, walking up to, you know, a water fountain and, and touching it or something. But, hey, I mean, hey, that's what happens. But, <laughs> you know, that, there's potential there. But, folks, let's talk about, and actually, uh, we were going to open up the lines, but I think we're just running out short on time. Just real quick, make sure you leave us those iTunes reviews. I know it's a, it's a process, but we'd appreciate those. Right, Obi? We're at 115 right now, man. We, what we I at? know, but I know I know we're going to go deep on this. That's why I'm saying. Okay. You know you know we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it good. Mm-hmm. But uh, leave those iTunes reviews. The easiest way, sadly, is to install the iTunes on your computer yeah. and then leave the review there. Yeah, I know. It's a terrible thing to ask because the website sucks. Yeah. And, you know, not everybody has an Apple device, but that's really the best way to do it. It's all the iTunes stuff. That's what I've been doing, leaving reviews for all my fellow podcasters. And I hate that software, but it's something you got to do it. But uh, otherwise, you know, we have Facebook. Leave us uh, Facebook, uh, some Facebook messages and stuff. You can tweet us at Obi1X2, at YogiZilla, and at Geeky Antics. Get the website, geekyantics.net. And of course, the voicemail slash SMS line, 646 801. Two one four nine, and you know what? Email that's still relevant. Mail at geekyantics.net. Let's jump into it, guys. The feature discussion: games that made an impact to us, you know, or that we feel are are, are a good look at what the future of game can be. This part two of the discussion. All right. Now, have you guys thought about some yeah. of the most memorable games, or games that made the most impact to you? The games that have really just Lived in your memories and you, you visit often probably in, in your dreams or something. I really Actually, don't. What you, I really don't oh, have we, any of those. Really? No, nothing. No dreams. Oh man. Nothing. No, wait, homie. Any. Nothing. Nothing that's made you say, "Man, I wish there were more games like this." There's got to be at least one. Everybody has their one. I really, I like I said, it. yeah. Let me think about it for a little bit because I really, there's really not one game that I can say there needs to be more of this. SG. Uh, what about you? <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's, it's diff. Well, for when I grew up, when I done grew it up, there was things called arcade places. Arcade. They were called arcade. And, uh, I always <laughs> tended to gradu- graduate, to gravitate towards the, I forgot what Sega called them, but they were the, the, the sit down, uh, crazy move, flip you upside down machines. Yeah. And, and if that, you know, that is, the arcades really don't exist like they used to in America anyway. Yeah. Um, so um, that kind of stuff uh, is, was the jump off for me, you know, that plus Sega. Um, but yep. like moving into like uh, what consoles are, what games are now, it's it seems that <clears throat> excuse me the um, the open world uh, bandwagon is 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 going strong and everybody's jumping on it. Yeah, which is good because I think there still needs to be a lot of a lot of work done in the open world space. Um, games like we mentioned this before. Um, Shadow Mordor, where they add it. it's an open world game, but the open world kind of sucks, and it's like <laughs> it's like it's open world, but eh, it's like blech. But the Nemesis system, though, that's nice. Give me that. So you give me Nemesis system in Grand Theft Auto or Skyrim, Fallout. You know that 
that changes things. And then that's just, that's like one little baby step. And then after that, uh, adding AI and stuff. So it's more about, it's more about like different systems and iterating on different systems and implementing them into uh, what open world games are and will be going forward. And um, I think it's more about AI stuff than anything else because yeah. my my one dream, like I, I watched the movie Her, and I was like, damn man, Scarlett Johansson was talking to me, man. This <laughs> would be so mad because I'd be talking to my computer all the time. Like, why are you talking to that girl? Why are you talking to? Because she she understands me. I don't think you understand, Bridget. I'm sorry. I got to talk to. I forgot what Samantha. That's that's <laughs> her name. So it's. Yeah, man, it's, it's AI for me right now, but yeah, but but that's like now. That's like knowing what we know now, knowing what um. Hold up, SG. Do you remember when the sound blasters first came out? The first sixteen bit sound blasters came out. They had this this utility uh, command line utility called uh, Doctor Sebastio. You remember that? Uh I don't remember the name, but is that when uh, you could type it in and then make the the vo- wait, make it talk and stuff? Yeah, and it was a learning system. It would learn how you talked, how you typed, and and it would like pick up certain phrases and respond to you pretty. You know, it, it was limited. It, it looked for certain trigger words and phrases, right, right. but like that was an early thing. And I'm like, man, like people were trying before, and I, and I agree. Like, why can't we have that AI where more of that AI where it learns your habits? Like Obi, I think Obi was talking about. Uh, I forgot what game he was talking about where it learns where you camp. The AI learns where you camp or where you like to hide, and it'll look for you there. Uh-huh. You know, if it's if it see you're too aggressive, they'll work. You know, they'll spread out a certain way. If they see you're too laid back, they'll be more aggressive. You know, stuff like that. Like, that's what we need to see more. I, I agree. That's like that's why I want to see more of that. Of focus on that. But is there any game in particular where you saw something like that outside of Shadow, Shadow of Mordor? Like that you saw AI like that? It was like, wow, this is pretty smart. Well, the, the thing about AI is that we don't notice AI until it's bad AI. And like, damn, this is getting <laughs> messed up. But when it's a good game and everything is working, it's like, man, this is a good game. And this, and then this happened and this happened. That's, that's a lot of AI and, and subroutines and all that stuff happening that you don't notice or it's smartly implemented. Um, so I would say just a lot of the good games that don't, don't smack you in the face with how dumb the AI is, basically. Um, because there's so many different games or, or just so many different genres that would implement the AI kind of differently. Like first person shoot, like Call of Duty, it's going to implement AI different than, um, I was going to say, well, Skyrim or open world game is a little different because the, the routines are different. And you might have a, 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 a NPC that has a, a daily routine, you know, and that's, that's AI too, but it's a little bit different. But, you know, um, Anything in particular as of recent? I would it doesn't say... have to be. It doesn't have to be recent. It could be well, C-Man. I know you're big on, C- on Sega. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see, man. Um, C-Man was a, a smoke and mirrors game. Uh, it was cool, but it, you know, I, I kind of saw through it. and I was like, oh, okay, it's 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 kind of weird. <laughs> it's more weird than uh, cool, but it was still cool. <laughs> and I think that that was like a, that was like one of the little baby jump offs, but I mean here's the thing, right? C Man came out what, fifteen years, six to fourteen years ago, maybe fifteen, fourteen years ago, right? Yeah. And you know, 2016. Where is something like that now? You know, what I'm yeah. Saying? Where, I know Peter Molyneux was talking about Milo and all that stuff, which was probably which was C Man part C Man. <laughs> Uh, part uh, you know version two or whatever, but you know when when is the when are they going to be not scared to make a game like that? And yep. I think I think that's what it is. They they're not they're not sure that they can pull it off, so they're not really trying it. Um, I got another one for you. So AI is a big opportunity, but like I mean, people are still talking about vir- you know virtual reality and four K and all twenty one nine all this crap. But w- what about the, today's hardware still underused? You know, microphones can be used in fun ways. You know, more better voice detection. There's still more opportunities for that. But how about um, second screen experiences? Like Dreamcast was killing. I don't care what anyone says. I may be a fanboy, but the VMUs, that was a yeah. smart little idea. Especially yeah. when you could take VMUs in certain games and play the game away from the game. 
or look at your VMU and get a different display. And those things were limited because they weren't high definition displays. But they was still they did a lot of stuff with that. Like with Sonic Adventures, you took your Chow, you know, put it into in the VMU. You could attach your VMU to another VMU and battle your your Chows with each other. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> you could train yeah. your Chow, take it walking with you. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of the things that Dreamcast did right. You know. Um, but I mean, you know, I think. The uh, Nintendo NX might have something like that because they're they are messing with a little bit of dual uh, console connectivity or I don't know what tech they're doing, but they're the rumors say that the you know the NX is going to be portable and uh, dock station type of thing. So it, there might be some type of functionality functionality with the NX like that, but the, I mean second screen stuff is kind of it's it's your phone really now. Because everybody has one, so I think yeah. that the trick for uh, developers is to use that wisely. Not like uh, Fallout Shelter, where it's just like a, a game that's connected to it. Because I mean, that's I mean that works now, but I want to see what they can do further. And the, and the problem with it is like if you're sitting out playing a game, um. You know, you have a controller in your hand. You you have to let go of that to mess with your phone, and that's that's one of the main problems. Unless yeah. you can put, put it on the stand and it's like a second display on the side, but then you got to look over to it. So there there are uh, inherent problems with that second the whole second screen thing uh, in that respect. But like if if you do it like a Dreamcast type of deal, that might be all right. And if you utilize the phone, well, see, yeah. It, it might work. It might work. But it doesn't work in VR. And that's another thing about VR. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, I think I see two second screen experience as two different things. The second screen experience, the, the pure second screen experience is what, when you have another screen to expand your, your experience while you're playing the game. And then there's like the companion app or the game outside of the game when you're away from the console or your PC right. where you can still enjoy some of the content or do things or prepare whatever. You know, it's significant ways, and it, it's still something that's really underused. Now, now OB. Yep. Did you, did you think of something yet? Like I said, man, I really I really don't. I'm sorry. I, I just... Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm putting it spot. I didn't want, didn't want you to feel left out. No, no, no. I'm just listening to you guys talk. Well, I want to be good at it, so, you know. <laughs> well, I got some Sega stuff Damn. to go back to, because we left it. We squeezed it in last last show, and... If these games really deserve a little more love. We talked about Dra Dragon Force and Panzer Dragoon Saga and Guardian Heroes, and I, I want to pick apart some of the game, some of the core mechanics, and some of the things that we like to see built upon in, in, in new franchises or maybe you know spiritual successors or actual sequels, right? Mm -hmm. So, Guardian Heroes. I, a lot of people, uh, I feel like people either really love this game or they hate it, right. and I think this game is amazing because. How many four-player cooperative kind of dungeon crawlers? Well, I guess yeah, you, you can even call that. Let's call it action RPG. It's definitely an action RPG, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have how many do you have where there's a combo system like Marvel vs. Capcom style, like getting thirty hit combos and shit? And then on top of that, there's branching storylines. Mind yeah. you, the game wasn't that long if you took certain paths, but the replay value, insane. Yeah, that's... I, I think that's a game they should... A game like that, like those type of... I haven't... Is there another game like Guardian Heroes out? Because I don't know. Of There's one, I think it's called Code of Princess, something weird like that on the DS, I believe, a 3DS. Yeah. It's like one of those, like... Japanese games that was imported, that was localized, but didn't even get a lot of like fanfare. It's it's like a critical darling, but not many people are talking about it. I hear it's the closest thing to it. They had a Guardian Heroes sequel on the Game Boy Advance or something. It was nothing like the original though. So that's still I feel I, I would still say there's nothing like this out there. On top of that, every pretty much every character you encounter in that game, you could unlock to become a playable character. And right, they have right. their own move sets and everything, their own spells and combos. It's crazy. Dude, man, um, imagine if Street Fighter 7 was like that, like where you have all the characters with all their move sets and y'all just walking, you're walking through the town and then you come up against some, you know, 
uh, five M Bisons and y'all just start fighting and you jump up, <laughs> up and through the screen and, and come on, son. I'm back yeah. in the day before Guardian Heroes came out. I was like, man, if they had a game where you would fight a game and you could just walk around and it was like a an adventure game, but you would fight when you would meet, you would actually fight like a fighting game. That'd be cool. And then they made the game and I was like, oh, okay, there you go. But they haven't <laughs> done anything past that. And I'm like, yeah, why not? Yo, and on top of that, you had an AI companion that you could control, like give him commands, and he would do his own thing. Like that game is surprisingly deep, yo. Like, and if you don't know how to do good combos and like how to work together as a team, like some of those boss battles were crazy, man. No matter how leveled up you were, dude. They, if they take that and take it a little like a step further, better AI, make the game bigger in scope, like more longer and more paths you could take. You know, a, a, a bigger cast of characters and maybe add, like, loot, dro- loot drops. If they add loot drops, just loot drops alone, where you can gear out and then save your characters and, like, go, yo, son. Yeah. Di- Diablo, people will be like, Diablo what? What? <laughs> yeah. Street Fighter what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, people... The, th- the thing is, like the way the industry is, of course, they're gonna they're gonna go for the safe route. So that's why you get yeah. a whole bunch of first person shooters and stuff. But it, it, know, it, it, yeah, eventually you'll we'll get a in. It, it'll probably be an indie developer who does it. Uh, but you know, th- they're the guys who are. That's why I, I kind of I'm glad indie games are so strong right now because they're the guys who are who are taking chances and they're they're uh, quote, yeah. quote, innovating. You know, they're doing things that the the big safe guys won't do. Yep. So, and I, I honestly think the future of gaming is in the indie industry. In the big studios, you know, I'll buy three to five major releases a year from the big studios, but then most of my other stuff is indie, straight up. Yeah. Because yeah. I like the fresh, the freshness of it. Yo, but I'm gonna tell you right now, guys. If you guys, if anyone out there loves Guardian Heroes and wants to see something like that, I mean, I, I love the fact that they came out with the remix, the HD remix on, on 360, and it's backwards compatible on the Xbox One. Whoo, that would be it so is? happy. I'm I'm pretty sure it is. I remember I remember seeing it on my queue. Maybe I'm bugging. Ooh. I need to double check, but I'm pretty sure I saw it on there. Cause uh, that's the game I, I'd be willing to revisit. Oh man! But I'm telling you right now, you could do the music. I'll do the design, and then again, another developer to help me out. Cause I I just don't have the time. But if I had the time, I will I would develop the game myself. And then we might probably need a good graphics guy. Cause I could draw, but my skills are. Oh wait, wait, you could draw too, son. Yeah, well, I, I'll I, be I the tester. <laughs> You'll be the tester. Now, I, I, I know an artist, dude, uh, who's actually, uh, quick sign note, the same, the same artist. Gra- graphics are the most expensive part of development right now, I would say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but the same artist guy that I'm working with now, work with, I worked with on the last game, so we, we we're, right. <laughs> we're kind of moving, moving through games. but It's very doable, dude, because from a development perspective, it's not that hard to develop. The hardest part is getting a good collision uh, detection engine set up. Yeah. You know, that's the foundation. Then a nice combo system that's fluid. It feels tight and responsive, you're right? And then storyboarding all the different levels and the different paths you could take. And then if you actually have a, a real, like, story, you have to actually, you know, plot that out, the narrative and all the dialogue and all that. that, that get, that's, that's resource intensive. That takes yeah, a lot of time. Yeah. I mean, but with like Unity and and UE four, Unity's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that would make it a little bit. Well, I don't know if it would make it a little bit easier, but it's definitely more uh, accessible for anybody to do it now. Like versus back in the day when they originally released Guardian Heroes, when they had to build all that stuff by themselves. Yep. So it's doable, definitely doable. But uh, like you said, it is. It's not. It's not an easy thing to do. It's just carving out the time. See my. My cat's getting excited about it too. It's like, meow, meow, let's do it. Meow, like, meow. I remember when that little cat was all little and cute. Now she sounds like. Rawr. Oh yeah, you remember? She, yeah, so you remember she was a little tiny cat. She would she would sit on my shoulders at times. She still does it, yeah. but now she's big. Yeah. I'm like, you can't be staying up there. I, my back is bad. <laughs> but dude, it. Uh, I, we're gonna move on because I, I I'm yeah. getting some, you know, fanboy, you know, nerd gasm <laughs> over here, but. You know that that's that's something that like I'm aching for it because it's I I I love PvP I really do but I want to see more PVE stuff you know multiplayer stuff where the toxicity is thrown aside and you can just work together have fun and enjoy a game together and not be worried about like oh you got us killed and then nah 
it's, it gets too serious sometimes, you know, with a multiplayer game. Like, it's all so competitive. Like, I want a game yeah. where you just beat little NPCs up and be like, yeah, take that, sucker. Yeah, I, th- yeah, I think there's some value in the arcade, quote-unquote arcade style games. Now they're called casual, yeah. but whatever. But, yeah, that's you know, true. That's true. <laughs> now that's casual. Yeah. Like, you yeah. filthy casual. But then that was the arcade experience was a game where you just jumped in and you just en- enjoyed it. It's, it's just... I don't know. It's, it's like an essence that's been lost. Like that, that fast pace, super enjoyable experience. You know, like you keep going back to, it and and it never loses its luster, really. Yeah. Well, with the with the expansion of the internet um, and social media, everything's become social. So game, social, everything has to be multiplayer, multiplayer. And um, I think what one of the trends this generation is that every, they're making games that are multiplayer only and i think they jumped the gun on that but um i don't besides, have a problem with that <laughs> uh, i mean I, I don't have a problem with multiplayer games only but not everyone was ready for it just like no yeah. one was ready for having to buy a connect and and no one was ready for whatever else microsoft did wrong um yeah yeah but but as far as like uh keeping on topic like the innovations, uh, I, as I was looking up my, up at my games, and and one game I remember that had something really cool, that was a, a tech thing that isn't super. And I mean, they've done it obviously. It was um, L.A. Noir, Noir, L.A. Noir. Mm. Now it it wasn't the the game per se or the story or anything, but it was the how they captured the faces and the the performance capture, the facial capture really, because all they did was capture the face and they stuck it on a uh, another body. <laughs> and it, f- f- I was looking at this. And I'm like, I'm what? I'm playing this game, and and like the I'm like interviewing the character, and they're like giving me like a funny look, and they're doing like little gestures and stuff, and I'm getting information from just looking. It's and it's I was, that was the first game that did that, where you would get information from a person's reaction to a question or statement or something like that, and. I haven't seen it in another game since. Oblivion and, uh, did something to that, like to that degree, but not. They didn't. They did it, but not, to, not a degree. No, you cannot. No, you cannot tell me ob- Oblivion. Come on, son. You yeah, see them. You, you see them watch, faces in face. Oblivion. Come on, son. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> the, the same degree. ugliest people I on know. the video game. Yo, Bethesda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As good as their open world stuff is. They make some ugly MP. Well, I say Fallout, Fallout Four is getting a little better, but nope, there's some the faces, ugly. Yeah. Oh man, it's so the ugly. faces be the the faces be busted, but they still it wasn't as 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 uh as detailed as L.A. Noir, but they still had the right idea where you could you have to pick up on those that body language, and I, I like that. I, that's a really good concept. Like we have all again, that's a good use of graphics. We have the graphics, then put them to good use, like. Have those little subtleties because that's, yeah. that's good and stuff. It's, it's not impossible. It's just you know the technique that they use. But I mean that's that's a specific type of um, use because it, it's not you can't really do that throughout every every NPC and every every instance because it doesn't make sense in a game in a different type of game. So uh, for Ellie Noir, where you're you're investigating and you're asking questions and stuff, doing the doing the interrogations, that's where it, that's where it makes sense and that's where it worked out. Um, but I would like to see that that tech, like, could it be used? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'm trying to think of a, of, a, of another game that could use that, unless there was just a specific type of mission in a like a GTA where you had to do some snooping around detective work or something. Then that could be implemented, but you know how how expensive would that be and and stuff like that. So I don't know. Maybe in a new Mass Effect because those are kind of detective games in a way. Oh, I think even MMOs could take advantage of that kind of feature because a lot of quests you do in MMOs are just binary decisions, and you know you don't really feel invested in them. People just click through the dialogue; they don't feel any immersion. They don't feel tied down connected to that anything at all like it's just like oh just keep pushing a or keep pressing enter keep pressing space and move along because there's nothing really to them but if you have to actually pay attention to subtleties like that then people may actually like enjoy the experience a little more but uh i got some more games i'm gonna mess it up i'm gonna machine gun put these out there and then uh, i'm gonna see if any of these 
hit home for any of you. So we're going to go through the list real quick here. Laser Squad for PC. Pajel's Mercenaries for PC. Uh, Battletoads. Double Dragon 3. <laughs> Battletoads. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Okay, uh, so... we'll, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. Keep it in your back pocket. We'll come back to it. I'm going to throw Dungeon of the, of the Endless out there because I have to. So I'm going to keep that little running gag going. Alone mm-hmm. in the Dark. The original, not the one on 360. Though I actually like that one. I'm weird. Um, Wolfenstein. Again, orig- original. Quake. Oregon Trail. Desert Commander. And Command and Conquer. Now, we're, we're, we're talking about these games from the perspective of not necessarily they were the best of their class, but that they had aspects that that we we would like to see built upon. You know, like you, you mentioned Nemesis system from Shadow of Mortar. You didn't really like the game as much, but you liked that that system. All right, so you, you're going to mention Battletoads. That, that one stood out for you? Is that the only one that stood out for you? Well, I, I was wondering what, what about Battletoads was... Um was standout ish because I know it was just a kind of a 2D p- pl- platformer, not really a platformer. It's just Bra- it's, brawler, it's, I would say. It, it, Beat it, 2D up. Side scroller bl- brawler, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where, where you had the big fist come out and your big foot. Come out <laughs> <and> <laughs> I mean, I I played through the arcade version and I tried to play the NES version on the uh, rear replay and I was like, nope, not play, nope. <laughs> I stopped. I stopped. I couldn't. I couldn't get. I got to the bike. And I was like, nah, I'm not doing this. The bike is where a lot of people stop because uh, yeah. that's an example of terrible difficulty progression. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It goes from challenging to what the fuck. <laughs> and then you're like, I'm done. Yep. Uh, most people didn't see past that level, sadly. But, right. you know, there's a lot of things I like about this game. And nostalgia aside, I do feel like the game holds up well, but I think people will enjoy it more if they have an experience with it, going back to it. Years late, you know, over two decades later, you know, well over two decades later, it's it's rough. But I know there were a lot of brawlers. That, that was kind of like the popular genre of the time, you know. You had Streets of Rage later on, and you had Double Dragon, and brawlers were all over the place, right? But, you know, Final Fight, I mean, it could go on and on. But what I like about it, I know this game had personality. Like, the level design, they put a lot of attention in each of the levels. Each level had its own kind of challenge and different mechanics to pick up on. And it and, and it did a good job, usually, of easing you into the mechanics so you would know what to expect and be ready for it. it with the exception of the rat race. <laughs> yeah. You know, which is a kind of metaphor and some kind of ir- sick irony there. But anyway, <laughs> you know, and, and the boss battles were fun. It had enough puzzle solving to keep you challenged, but not too much. You know, a little bit of platforming. You know, a little bit of puzzle song, but it was, it, it, they focused on the action. I don't know, something about that game, the way you, they took a, a simple system, but they added just enough enough depth to it, you know, like, it just, it, it has such an impact to me. Like, I I, I actually enjoy Battletoads more than, than, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, the arcade game, even though that's a ph- phenomenal game itself. Because mm-hmm. I, I like the way the fight, you know, the fighting system worked out and the little added effects they do like little particle effects you know the 8-bit particle effects you know <laughs> little stars and yeah. little things that would, that would happen it, something about it like they did right and I th- yeah i don't I think, know I, I think a game like that like battle toads falls into uh what nintendo's good at and that's adding personality or having personality in your games and yeah. just this kind of a, a solid uh just a game mechanic even though it's simple it's just easy to pick up and it's easy to understand. Um, it's like it's not innovative and it's not anything that I don't think uh, is isn't being replicated today. But damn, your cat's loud. Uh, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he's out of control right now. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, it's it's uh, you, you're 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 speaking on more of um game design and and art 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 design and and stuff like that as opposed to um innovation and uh yeah no no or no just, they're or definitely just, or just overall impact you know i feel yeah. like yeah but those comb- the combination of like the art style and the and the humor of of the game and the, and the little little touches they added to it to to just push it over the edge from being a, just a regular okie doke beat em up 
and uh, there are games out there that are like that. I mean, new games that just like Thomas, not Thomas is alone. Um, Yarny, what's that called, game called? Uh, uh, I am Yarny. bread. No, not I am bread. <laughs> it's it's coming out. Uh, I think it's coming out next week or next month or something like that. The Yarny game with the the red cat that's made of yarn and he's walking around. I oh heard yeah, yeah, yeah. Unta- unraveled, unraveled, unraveled. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't okay. looked too much into that. Yeah, I mean it's it's that's a that's a, a known quantity where it's um it's a side scrolling platforming adventure type of game. But it's not about that. That's that's how you make it through the actual meat of the game. And the meat of the game is is more of a narrative. I don't know what the narrative is, but there there are different there are different na- narrative um not cues but um themes in that game that reflect on uh everyday life and everyday people and that's why i think that game is going to do really well because a lot of people are going to relate to it because of what it is and what it's what what heartstrings it's tugging at basically and and yeah i have to look more into that it it looks like it has potential and from what we're talking about it sounds like something we should have on our radar is that when is that slated for release though um i I don't know if it's i don't think it's next week it's it i think it's next early next month uh March, okay. Damn. Yeah, March eighth or so, something like that. It's, it's early next month, I think. I got. You just made me think of a game that I, if they deliver on the potential there, I think it's gonna have a huge impact. Uh, that game, uh, Record. What do you think about that? Oh yeah. See, I don't know what that game is, and that's the thing. And I'm excited about. it. I'm like, if you're if you're the girl, and then you have the little the little ball that turns into a dog and it turns into a big ape gorilla thing. That's cool. So the mechanic is cool. The, the, the potential for the mechanic is cool. Um, but you know, I want to see what it is. Is it going to be a side scroller 2.5 D is it going to be actually, uh, you know, 3d is going to be third person, first person, you know, there's, there's a lot of questions. So that's, that's going to dictate, um, a lot of things. Uh, but you know, staying on topic, the, well, the the art style and the and the and the story, like a good story and the, and the excellent art style and all these things smashed together into a, a known quantity, uh, also makes for uh, a memorable game that you're just like, wow, that's the best game ever, you know. And that's that's important too. And I, I, we don't, I don't want to just look past that and say, oh, it's all about the new stuff, the tech, techity tech stuff. <laughs> you got to, you know, all all the things, the foundations of all these games, you know. There was a first Mario Brothers. Super Mario Brothers was like the first. I don't know if it was the first, but it was the first that did it well. And you know, moving yeah. on from there till till now, and you know, it's still it's still relevant. You know, it's still important. So, yeah. The thing that I think that uh, the record looks like it's gonna really tug at your heartstrings, but yeah. I when I look at it, my my imagination wandered it off, and I'm I'm picturing it as a game where you pick up, you scavenge for parts, and you build companions because you're in a lonely world that's like destitute from some kind of, I don't know, apocalyptic level event. That's what I made up in my mind. I'm like, ooh, I get to build robots because that's not something you don't see too often either. Like, there's a few games that have done it, but like, one of the games that I remember old school, uh, Cyborg Justice. Some people say it was a terrible game, but. You get to build your robots and then fight with them, you know. There's something like that now, Mech Warrior Online, but that's more on the simulation side. But you know, I just I think that's like that deep level, that deep customization. Like you know, I, it's funny that I I'll play a game like Van Helsing and I'm blown away by the fact that when I change what I'm equipping, my character actually looks different because that's something you take for granted now. Like games still don't do that sometimes. A lot of the time, like. It's like really like this is a simple thing for you to do. Yeah, yeah, dude. I I never I never thought too much of record because I didn't know too much about it. But you just said something like, if you can build your own robot, like that, a whole crafting mechanic built around your companion, that would be awesome. If they did that, I would be like, yep. And also, I just thought of it. <clears throat> uh, the the main character. I don't know what the character's name. Is, the girl who's a scavenger. In the desert, does that mm-hmm. remind you of a certain popular character that just happened recently? Yeah, I think it, so. <laughs> it makes me think of a lot of things. Well, for me, it it makes me think of Star Wars: Force Awakens. It makes me think of Ray. 
who is a very popular, strong female character right now. So inadvertently, mm. I don't know if it's inadvertently or it was uh, on purpose, but there can be a parallel to that uh, archetype, I guess, uh, of character where she's a strong female character in the desert <laughs> scavenging things. I guess that's a new uh, archetype. You know, and I'm glad you mentioned that because I want, I want this game to succeed. But not because, yeah. not merely because it has a strong narrative and a strong female lead. Those are wonderful things. Don't get me wrong. But I wanted people to say at the end of the day that game was fun to play. Because yeah. I just, again, I'm tired of people judging games like Last of Us, and they're like, "Oh, this is a great game. Why is it great? What a great story!" I'm like, "Then make it a fucking movie." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I watched The Last of Us on on Twitch. I think it was. Yep. And I was like, I don't need to play that. <laughs> yep. I just watched the whole thing. I watched the end. I was like, okay, good. I'm done. <laughs> All remarkable gameplay. Great to watch. Yeah, and that's the thing, because I was watching I was watching the gameplay. I was just supposed to watch the cutscenes. And I was like, okay, it's a game and stuff, but I no, I couldn't. How long is that a game? You doing that? And then I watched the multiplayer. I was like, oh hell no, I would not nope. <laughs> no, no, no! I wasn't watching. I wasn't watching. Well, I did watch the multiplayer, but I was, it was a it was a part towards the end where it was just like uh, the doors locked, clues, and then just a whole bunch of mushroom heads come out of every. I'm like, what? No, nope. <laughs> it's like Halo Five, man. Come on, son. See, uh, and, and I know we got to start wrapping up soon, but you mentioned Halo Five. That's another thing. Like we talked about lo- level design earlier. Like I hear from so many people, the Halo Five campaign is just the room simulator. You, be, you clear out a room, and then it opens up a new, another area, and it's yeah. so formulaic. It's like, you remember, like before, with such limited hardware, and such limited possibilities, people used to really take like the level designers used to really take their time. You can see they poured their souls into level design. Now it's kind of like, <laughs> here you well... go. I, I use a random generator, and here's the level. I think I think people are exaggerating. I think Halo Five is just like other the, all, all the other Halo games. The problem is that uh, gamers are evolving to want more, basically. Mm. So if you give them the same stuff, same stuff, like oh, is this again? Uh, I mean, at certain parts, yeah, it is that. But you get to other parts, like um, uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's a, it's a snow area and it's a big open sandbox and you got to go and destroy these like beacons or whatever i forgot what, what you had to do but it, it reminds me of, of the earlier halo games where it's a big open sandbox and you and you're a scorpion and you're blowing stuff up it's just like that there's a lot of vehicles and stuff so it's it's halo but i think that that style is a little bit and it's not antiquated but it they need to do something more to make people be like oh man did you see that part or whatever and I don't, I mean, it might be part, part of it might be the actual design of the space, but I think part of it is also the Call of Duty effect where they've put all these kind of set pieces and smashed them in there and, and tied them all together nice and, and, and neat. So it doesn't seem like it's a little area here and a little area there. They tie it, they tie, you know, they'll tie, uh, not a cutscene, but, uh, uh, an event with, uh, with the actual area and it, and it feels like it's it's not a room with right with with guys you have to kill and then keep it moving and the thing is is you know some games hide it better than others because every game that's what every game is basically if you look at a map like not like like the final graphics but if you just take it down to just primary uh shapes and stuff it's a room and you put there's an enemy here and an enemy here and an enemy here and you know that's why you have people building maps because that's all it is is a map with enemies in it. So as every game, I agree. You know, there's just there's some of it's just plain lazy, and I got the hiccups. So excuse me, but uh, yeah, it's just it just feels like it's a lot of the stuff you could t- you could tell, and I think gamers are finally realizing when stuff uninspired and just lazy. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. I I haven't played Halo Five personally. I've just seen it played and. It it's, looks like it had um, some opportunities, but the multiplayer looks amazing. No, the multiplayer is really, really good. The problem with the single player, the campaign, is just that um, it was kind of a bait and switch, like the the whole ad campaign, and it's really more locked than Master Chief, but it's still good. You know, yeah, that's it, what I it, heard. I think it's, I it, think it's the best. I think I still think it's like the one of the best Halos. Um, 
overall. Yeah, to be yeah, honest, I'm not playing Halo for the campaign personally. I am. I don't care about. I am. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that big into the mythos. I'm more about the multi multiplayer experience. Good lord, my hiccups are like coming well, back with the vengeance. Uh, the cad's gone and the hiccups come. That's what happens. Yep, this is gonna be one of those nights. Obi, still alive over there? I sure am. Just listening to you guys talk. Well, I know we gotta wrap up, but um. You, you you like the RTS games? You did you ever have a good uh good run with Command and Conquer or Desert Command or or any of the early RTS games? I did, I did Command and Conquer. On uh, the biggest one that I played was that I really really enjoyed was Generals. Um, the first one, like the first, um, the old old. <laughs> but Generals is a little more recent, yeah. Yeah, but there was a there was a new one. There was a an older one too. But I don't think it was called Generals. But it was like um it was one of the versus uh you know um one of the first times they were talking about, you know, red versus blue kind of uh, treating them like uh, colors as opposed to actual names or you know whatever. I I think I know what you're talking about. For for me, like uh, one of the biggest things with Command and Conquer is that they took simple ideas and made them better. Like they kept fine tuning the pathing because if mm-hmm. you have bad pathing in the RTS, oh, it's 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 the worst. Because your <laughs> your little soldiers just commit suicide. You're like, no, don't go that way. <laughs> you know, or or they made the 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 scatter button so you can spread your guys out and they wouldn't be clustered up and end up getting nuked easily. Right. Right. You know, uh, like. I think RTS is is one of the few spaces where there's been a lot of innovation, you know, f- from going from a Command and Conquer or, or Her- Herzog's Y, <laughs> you know, uh, to to what we have today. Like the four X games are just amazing in scope. Like all, it, it's crazy what they have out, out there now. Um, yeah, RTS is actually moving forward. I would say, and, and tactics get. Tactics games like you know the XCOM style games or Satellite Rain type type games. I think they're doing a lot of stuff to move those things forward. Oh, that's Hopefully. another thing. Uh, real quick, the um, speaking of XCOM and those type of games, the um, the one thing I, I noticed about the Division, going back to that, that I liked was like when you're in cover and it shows like the line and it shows you where your your cover points are. Like if you press, yeah, I was like yo. I kind of like that. And that's what we're talking about, where you're taking um, an element of older games um, and putting it into the new games, you know, open world, MMO, third person shooter. And then you add that little element of, you know, the little uh, movement type. And I'm like, I kind of like that. And it's just a little, little thing, but it's something that like, you know what, that might be the thing that make me uh, go out and get that game. Yeah, it's like, you know, even if it's just little changes, the the fact that they're building upon it in significant ways is important. When you see, because a lot of time we're seeing now is just regurgitated stuff with facelifts. You know, it's it's, a, it's the same turd, but it's a sli- slightly shinier turd. And I keep using the same meta- metaphor, but, you know, it works. So, uh, yeah, the Division, they, you can see little touches they have here and there that's like, yeah, this, this is kind of like the Gears of War, you know, uh, cover system but they added that little thing with the lines so it makes it easy to see where you're gonna run to or where you'll end up and how you can move it maneuver the the obstacles yeah i like that a lot but i think it's time to wrap up right obi it is unfortunately guys if you guys have any thoughts about what what, anything that we talked about tonight um, you guys can get send us a voicemail six four six eight zero one two one four nine you guys can send us a uh, some mail, uh, email at um, well mail at geekyantics.net. So make sure uh, horseplay live, horseplay live is everywhere you can listen to or download awesome podcasts, including allgames.com, Player FM, Stitcher, and TuneIn Radio. Please take a few minutes out to thumbs up, favorite, subscribe, and share even better. We'd love some comments and reviews, guys. We really want those comments and reviews. It's quick, it's easy, it really helps us out. Huge thanks to all those that are that are um, um, promoting our content. Every little bit helps. 
Really appreciate you guys like eye candy. We do YouTube and Twitch, youtube.com forward slash geeky antics. And then, of course, the highlight here at twitch.tv forward slash geeky antics. Here on Geeky Antics Network, in collaboration with All Games Radio Network, we have tons of shows that we cover in a wide spectrum of topics. We can't possibly plug them all because we'd be here for another hour. So if you guys want to check out your favorite <laughs> show, geekyantics.net forward slash schedule, where you can also see our flagship show over on Twitch profile and our aggregate feed over at geekyantics.net forward slash podcasts. Why they're not in the same, I don't know. <laughs> Don't forget, guys, all our intro, all our music that we do for here for Horseplay Live and a lot of our shows is provided by Technoax Royalty Free. That's Techno with a K. You can go check him out, technoax.com. He's got a lot of cool stuff, but uh, a little bit for everybody. So, any last words there, uh, Mr. SG? Yeah. Where can they find you at? Yeah. Um, you can find me everywhere. Lord SG on Instagram, yeah. Uh, R9Cast on everything else, basically. So Reservoir9.com slash R9Cast. If you want the archives, just the MP3s, the R- RSSs of the R9Cast show, and AllGames.com, uh, R9C. R- R- AllGames.com slash R9C, I believe, is the direct link for that. And I want to plug one quick thing real quick, mm-hmm. and that's... uh. Uh, the game I'm working on, which is called Junk E.T., and uh, I'm doing music soundtrack, but uh, most importantly, we need uh, green light um, votes for that game so that we can get up on green light and do things. So, um, uh, Yeah, just go to green light and look up Junk E.T. game, I think, or just Junk E.T. It should pop up and just click at a button and say, yeah, it's make it good and stuff. Junk ET, yes. Junk ET. I have to get a preview copy before I can uh, do that, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a beta, actually, uh, not a beta, alpha. So if you go to junketgame.com, uh, you can sign up for the beta, the alpha. I keep saying beta. Uh, you, you know, you you create an account on the site, and then you can they'll send you a a beta key code jammy thing, and then you can and try you it out. You can guarantee that. Yeah, yeah, I like did I'll get it, uh, one. Okay. Yeah, 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 definitely. Right. Uh, Cause yeah, we need people to to try it out and give us feedback and stuff. So and these they the guys are always uh, putting up new uh, builds of the game. So it's always interesting to see a new build and see like new weapons and new new levels and stuff they implement. So it's all good. But yeah. Yogi, how are you, sir? Where can everybody find you? Me? <laughs> I'm Yogi Zip. Yogi Zilla everywhere without the hiccup. Uh, Steam, Twitter, Xbox Live. Yeah. Tumblr, Instagram. I miss Instagram? Yeah. I'm on all that stuff. And I got hiccups, and it's pretty annoying. I don't really remember where I'm at, but if you guys look it up, we'll be one next two. If I'm there, I'm there. Uh, hit me up. Um, but, guys, if you guys are listening to us on allgames.com, the Deck Pixel Live Power Ranking Show is up, followed by Knuckleballer Radio um, at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, remember that the uh, our friends, uh, the B-Team podcast, uh, they moved to Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on our unofficial sister network, All Games Radio Network. Again, guys, thank you, guys. It's been Horseplay Live February 4th, well, 5th now, but we will see you guys next week. Later. Later, taters. Play the damn music. Right now.
Again, guys, thank you very much for for hanging out with us today, Horseplay Live. Um, appreciate it. I know I wasn't very blah, blah, blah today. So, <laughs> we love you guys. I will see you guys tomorrow. Yogi, do we have Retro Friday tomorrow? I'm actually doing, I think I'm going to do them for a little while every other Friday. So, the weekend of time and tea time, I won't do it. It'll be a, so every so weekend, it'll be something different. May make sure you guys tune in on Saturday here, uh, time allow me tea time at noon. Maybe if you're lucky, you might even get a chance to listen to Fatal Blades talk because he has his deep voice. I got the <laughs> fucking hiccups now, Yogi. I know it's an epidemic, son. <laughs> but again, guys, thank you very much to all of you. We love you very much. We'll see you guys next time. Later. <laughs>